Peace and blessings. Israel, the Most High Christ, bless us all. Be in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. And it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple. So Peter and John, two apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, went together into the temple at Jerusalem at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. So at the temple of Jerusalem, it was an hour of prayer at the ninth hour, and Peter and John went up together into the temple at Jerusalem at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, meaning the ninth hour of the day. And a certain man, a certain man lame from his mother's womb. In other words, there was a certain man that was crippled that came out that way out of his mother's womb, was carried. So he had to be carried by someone whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. So every day at the gate of the temple, this brother that was lame from his mother's womb, crippled from his mother's womb, was laid at the temple, at the gate of the temple. And when he was laid at the uh, temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So this brother would ask alms of those that would be entering inside the temple that was at Jerusalem. Verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked in alms. So asking for alms would be asking for, you know, uh, money, money you know, some type of material possessions or food, things like that. And Peter and John, two disciples, apostles, sent forth of the Lord, went into the temple, and the man saw them both. So that's why I say, who seeing Peter and John asked, excuse, I'm sorry, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked in alms. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. So Peter fastened his eyes upon this man that was crippled from his mother's womb that was sitting at the gate of the temple of Jerusalem during the hour of prayer at the place at the gate called Beautiful. So Peter, fastening eyes upon him, with his brother in Christ, John, the Apostle John, said, look on us. So he told the brother, look upon us. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So the man looked upon Peter and John and he was in expectation to receive, you know, some type of money or something from Peter and John because Peter, you know, fastened his eyes upon him and said, look on us. Verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. So Peter said, I, I don't have silver and I don't have gold, but such as have, such as I have, give I thee. But such as I have, give I thee. So he said, I have something that has been bestowed upon me that through prayer I, I can give you. I, can, I, 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 I don't have silver and gold, but I have something that, 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 that I can give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, rise up and what? Walk. So Peter said, I don't have silver and gold, but such as I have, give I thee in the name, meaning under the power and authority of Jesus Christ, which at this time was sitting on the right hand of the Father, 
And by Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, all powers and authorities are subject unto him in heaven and on earth. So he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we know that it's not so they so that he knows who 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 he's doing this in the name of. Because there were other men that had this name. But there's only one Jesus, the Messiah, that was of Nazareth, of Galilee. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. So Peter took this man that was crippled from his mother's womb. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him. See, he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So immediately this brother's feet and ankle bones received strength. Where did he receive their strength? From on high. Because what did Peter say? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Meaning under the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, immediately, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. So how did he immediately in his feet and his ankle bones receive strength to, to be able to rise up and walk? By Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The same one that created man to begin with. See, it's not, it's not a difficult or hard thing for the Lord Jesus Christ to heal anyone in any condition that they're in. It, it's, it's not an impossible thing for Peter to pray over this brother and, and by the power and authority of Christ in Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand, for Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, for Jesus Christ in Nazareth sitting on the right hand of the Father, be able through the Spirit Give this man the strength in his feet and ankle bones to be able to rise up and walk. Because Christ created Adam and the rest of mankind. So does he not have the power to, upon the, a descendant of Adam, another son of God, to give strength in his feet and ankle bones to rise up and walk is, is would that be a difficult thing N no not for not for christ not for christ sitting on the right hand of the father so what, what we're reading here going down is what christ told his disciples that if if, if you believe me the works that i do and greater works than these shall you do and this is exactly what Christ was talking about. So let's read on. It says, and he leaping up. So the man that was crippled from his mother's womb leaped up and he what? And stood. He was able to stand. And walked. So and well, how, how long was this done? Immediately. There was no rehab necessary. The ascended Christ of Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Father has the power and authority to do this. And he, being in the, the man that was crippled from his mother's womb, he leaped up. He just didn't get up. He leaped up. Like a basketball player, leaping up and, and stood and walked. He was able to walk and entered with them meaning with Peter and John, the Apostle John, into the temple, meaning into the temple of Jerusalem. Walking, 
So he was walking into the temple and leaping. So the brother was leaping. And what was he doing? And praising who? The Most High, God. So the brother was praising God that by the power and authority of Jesus Christ in Nazareth, Peter and John praying over him that he was able to finally walk again. And this was done immediately. As soon as they said in the name of Jesus Christ in Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he was praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him, meaning the crippled man, that was well, the man that was crippled. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's. And what were they doing? Greatly wondering. So they were bewildered. They knew who he was. This is the man all that they seen every day laid at the, at the, at the gate of the temple. And asking for alms. And here they're seeing him walking, leaping in the temple, praising the Most High. The people were amazed. And they were greatly wondering. Because it told us in verse 11, and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John. So he was holding them. Like, you know, he... he you can only imagine what's in his mind. Thank the Lord, that thank the Most High that, that he sent these men into my life for me to be healed by the power and authority of Christ of Nazareth. All praises to the Most High. So there's the man and Peter and John with him. And it's telling us in verse 11 that all the people ran together onto them. So they ran. Quickly. In the porch that is called Solomon's, and they were greatly wondering, they were bewildered. Verse 12. And when Peter saw it, so that he saw how the people ran onto them, they were bewildered. They were greatly wondering. Check out what Peter's going to say. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. Ye, men of Israel, why marvel ye? Why are you so marveled at this? Question mark. Why are you so marveled that this happened to this man? Why, why are you? Why, why is it? Why is it that you're bewildered? Why is it that you're, you're amazed? Because Peter knows that this was done by the power and authority of Christ. He's going to explain so. Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Why are you looking so intently upon us? See, because Peter is not going to make this about him or John. This great work that, that they did. Let's read the 12 verse again. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly, meaning intently, on us? Why are you looking so intently upon us? As through by our own power or holiness, we, see, we have made this man to walk, question mark. So we checking out what Peter's asking the people. Why are you looking so intently upon us? As though this man that was healed was healed by our own power. We don't have the power to do this. See, so even when Peter said, such as I give thee, 
it, it, it that does that don't mean that it came from him. Because remember when he said in verse six, then Peter said, "Silver and, and gold have I none, but such as I give, such as I have, give I thee." In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So by whose power and holiness was this man made whole? By the power and authority and holiness of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Father. That's what we're reading, Israel. Let's go back to this point. In verse, uh, verse 12 again. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye? Why are you amazed at us? Why, I mean, why are you amazed at this, meaning at this work that was done? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Why are you looking so intently upon us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? Why are you looking upon us like as if it was through our own power? The power of me and John, my brother here in Christ, why are you looking at, at us like it was by our own power or of our own holiness? We have made this man to walk. So how did Peter and John make that man to walk? If it wasn't by their own power or their own holiness. See? So right there showing you that these men, they're just vessels. They didn't use this great work that they did by the power and authority of Jesus Christ that sitteth on the right hand of God as a platform to promote or exalt themselves or to promote their own movement or their own camp or their own following. See, these brothers didn't use this great work, this beautiful work, but for a man that was crippled for, for, for his whole life, came out of his mother's womb. And on this day, this man received the strength to be able to rise up, walk, rise up, leap, and walk into the temple with Peter and John at his side. The people were looking at them like, oh my, you know, you can only imagine what they were thinking. I mean, Peter's reply goes into what they were thinking. They must have been looking at these men that, oh, these must be some type of holy men by their power and authority, some type of gods they are. That's why Peter had to say it like that. Why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this man a walk? And this is a, a, a powerful deed that had all the people wondering. This is not a light thing that happened with this man. And as great as it worked that this was, Peter and John are not seizing this opportunity as a platform to promote themselves or make themselves like they some type of, of men that they're to be looked upon to be some type of uh, authority or, or, or figure where now it's about, it's about them now. Let's see what Peter says, verse 13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. See, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. Those are the forefathers of Israel, the 12 tribes. The God of our fathers, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, hath glorified his son Jesus. So now we get into the root. The cause of this man being healed. Peter's bringing out that this is about the Most High and Christ. See, Peter is identifying himself with his brothers. Look, we the, we the children of our, he said, our fathers. Peter's no greater than any man that was amazed at what happened to this man. He's no greater than them. He's blessed. To be a vessel, but he's not better than them. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus. So what do you mean by 
the Most High glorified his son. The Most High glorified Jesus Christ when he was risen from the dead three days and three nights after his burial. Because when Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, he was declared to be the Son of God with power. And then when he ascended to sit on the right hand of the Father to enter into his glory, that's when that the disciples saw that. When they saw that, that was, that was the most high continuing to glorify his son. Because to sit on the right hand of the Father is glory. And that's where Christ sitteth now as we speak. Over 2,000 years after Peter and John did this great work, over 2,000 years later, this same Jesus Christ that was glorified sitteth on the right hand of the Father. So let's continue to read what he's saying here. Whom ye delivered up. So he's speaking directly to the people that delivered Jesus Christ up to be killed. Because remember, how was Jesus Christ glorified? By his resurrection from the what? Dead. Well, how did he die? Who did he die from the hands of? Well, Peter's speaking on it. Whom ye delivered up. So who is he talking to? Israelites. That got together with Pilate and Herod. To have the Lord Christ killed and crucified and killed. And denied him. See, Israel denied Christ. Not all Israel, but the ones that were being wicked. The ones that rejected him and denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go. There was a point where Pilate was determined to let him go. And what did Israel say? Crucify him. Crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. So now all of a sudden these men are about Caesar. They were being wicked. And they're only saying that to Pilate. To scare him. So that he would be swayed. To have the final say so. For the Lord to be killed. But you denied the Holy One and the just. The Holy One is the, Jesus Christ and the just. So the just one, the Holy One, the just, see how the word holy and just is capital H and J? Because that's talking about the Son of God, that's why. So, so Israel denied the Holy One and the just. The Lord was just. He was righteous. He was without fault. He was, he was as a lamb without blemish. But they're talking about crucify him. Christ was without sin. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you. So who's that murderer? Bar Barabbas. They desired a murderer to be granted unto them, to be released. But the one that was without sin, the Holy One of Israel, what did they do? They denied him in the presence of Pilate, before their real enemy, Pilate. When the Pilate was determined to let him go. But then he caved in and gave in to the pressure. And then tried to play it off, all the blood's on your hands. No, he had his part too, like it says in Psalm 2. Verse 15. And killed by crucifixion, nailed to a cross, the prince, or like I say in the reference column where it said prince, author. Christ is the author and finish of our faith. Our faith begins with Christ and it's matured and perfected in Christ. Repentance in Christ, repenting from sin and being baptized in water under the power and authority of Jesus Christ in Nazareth. And kill the prince of life, whom God, the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers, whom God hath what? Raised from the dead. The Most High raised Jesus Christ from the dead three days and three nights after his burial. And when he rose him from the dead, he what? Glorified him. 
Because when the Most High raised, rose Christ from the dead, he rose from the dead to live eternally. And the Most High gave him power and authority in heaven and in earth. That's true glory. That's the glory that the Most High gave Christ. And kill the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead. So the Most High raised Christ up from the dead three days and three nights after his burial. The same, so, so Peter is speaking to the same ones that killed Christ. So ain't it powerful how this was the same Peter at one point that denied Christ three times is now speaking boldly before the men that killed him? How can that be? How could that be? Well, Jesus Christ said before he denied him to Peter, he said, Satan is desired to, to sift you as the wheat, but I have prayed for thee. And when thou art strengthened, I'm sorry, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. See? So how was Peter able to speak like this before the men that killed Christ when at one point of his life, when Christ was, you know, condemned to death, he denied him three times before the cock crowed in the morning. By the power and authority of the Most High in Christ, Peter's doing this. This is not his holiness. This is not his power. See, anything that the Most High through the Holy Spirit has us does do, no matter what it is, it's not our own holiness or power. It's by the power and authority of Christ. So basically, he's explaining to them how this man was raised from the dead. I mean, how this man was raised from this state of being crippled from his mother's womb. So verse 15, let's read again. And killed, meaning crucified, the prince of life, whom God, the Most High, hath raised from the dead, whereof we, meaning Peter and John, <coughs> and the rest of the disciples, beginning with them, are what? Witnesses. So this type of preaching of Peter here is, was, was a reoccurring type of teaching all throughout his ministry. It was the same doctrine over and over and over again. When preaching to Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, when we read in Acts 10, it was a similar message. The message that the apostles preached is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that was raised from the dead. That's what they preached. So he's telling the men that killed him, y'all killed the Prince of Life whom God had raised from the dead where we are all witnesses. And his name through faith. So when it says his name, Although at that time, of course, they knew the Messiah's name in the Hebrew. It's not about the pronunciation of his name in the Hebrew. When he's saying in his name through faith, meaning under the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, through faith. In his name. Because what does the Messiah's name mean? Savior. So no matter what language that we speak. If we believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and we have faith in that, we can receive the same type of blessings that this man received. That's why I say in his name through faith, in his name. So he's making it clear under whose power and authority this man was healed. In his name through faith, in his name. See? He's saying it twice. He's not stressing the pronunciation because there were other men named Jesus or Joshua in the scriptures. When they say his name, let's understand. The one whom the Most High raised from the dead. The one whom the Most High glorified. Back to 16 verse. And his name through faith. In his name. See, twice. 
hath made this man, that man that was crippled from his mother's womb, strong. Only the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father could do this. Whom ye see and know. Y'all see him. and Y'all know who he is. See, this wasn't uh, like they got in these uh, so-called uh, Christian churches and all that. These fake healings. You got guys wh whipping off their jackets and hitting people upside their head and um, doing crazy acrobatic crazy stuff. Foaming at the mouth, bugged out stuff. These fake healings in, 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 uh, in, in uh, these, uh, what do they call them, Tele televangelists. It's all a show. They knew who this man was. This is the this 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 man that was. This is not. They know who he was. They 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 saw the condition that he was in. That's why they marveled. That Peter had to set him straight. It's not by our holiness, our own power and authority, that this man is made whole. It's through the faith which is in Jesus Christ. So let's read again, verse 16. In his name through faith, in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yeah, the faith which is by him. The faith which is by Christ hath given him, meaning the man that was crippled, this what? Perfect. Soundness. This man was made perfectly whole, healed. Has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all, meaning before all your eyes. This is this man that was crippled from his mother's womb. He has been made perfectly sound. In the presence of you all, by the same man that you denied. The same man that you were partakers in murdering. By that very same man, God raised from the dead. And through faith in his name, this man stands, this healed man right here, he stands in perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, that's worthy of all praises. So what happened here? We'll go back to this in a moment. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 14. Christ told his disciples that they would do things like this. <coughs> so let's go to the book of John, chapter 14. Let's read John chapter 14. John 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, meaning truly, truly, I, this is Jesus Christ, speaking to his disciples. Verily, verily, I say unto you, meaning I say this in truth. He that believeth on me. To believe on Jesus Christ is to believe and have faith that he is the son of God. That he is the Messiah, the Christ of Israel. He that believeth on me, meaning he that believeth on Jesus Christ, the works that I do shall he, meaning the one that believes on him, shall he do, what does the word there say? Also. 
So let us meditate on what he's telling his disciples there because it's very powerful. Because what were the words that Christ was doing while he was with his disciples? Healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, people that had different infirmities, different sicknesses, um, had spirits on them that possessed them, that had them in a rage, in a lunatic state of mind. Some of them had the spirits of fornication, adultery, murder, theft, covetousness, pride. Christ healed them. Christ brought many of the children of Israel into repentance. Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, raised the dead. And here Christ is telling his disciples, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. So how can men on earth, how can these men on earth that he was speaking to, how were they able, how were they going to be able to do the works that Christ did? Some would say that's impossible. Some Israelites teach falsely that this is talking about in the kingdom. Acts 2 is not in the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, ain't going to be no crippled brothers. Ain't going to be no sickness. And ain't going to be nobody in the kingdom uh, in their mother coming out of their mother's womb crippled. Where in the kingdom, somebody, somebody's sick like that and then you, you, they got to be prayed over. No. The Lord going to wipe away all, all those tears and all the sorrows from us in the kingdom. All the sufferings. So you have Israelites teaching that it's talking about the kingdom. See, but see, they but they they err not knowing the scriptures. And they err not, not only do they err not knowing the scriptures, but they err not knowing the power of God. See? But these 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 are people that 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 they talk about the most high, Yahweh this, Yahweh Shai that, the most high this, Yahuwah Yeshua. See? But in their doctrine, in their doctrine, it shows that it's all talk. It's praising the Most High with their mouth and lips, but their heart is far from him. Because Christ is telling his disciples that those that believe on me, the works that I do, shall ye do also. Let's read on in verse 12. And greater works... Greater works than what Christ did, than these, see, than what Christ was doing presently among them, shall what? Shall his future tense, shall he do? <laughs> so you, you got some Israel say, yes, there's no way no man on earth could do the works that Christ did. Well, <laughs> you're wrong. Because not only were they able to do the works that Christ did, they were able to do greater works than what Christ did. So now they really flip in the lid. They're all, that's impossible. That's blasphemy. I've, I've heard brothers say these things. You know, brothers that have followers, thinking they're in the truth. Denying Christ. The power, the power, they err not knowing the scripture. They deny the power. They, they err not knowing the power of God. The Lord said, greater works, greater works than these, meaning the works that he was presently doing among his disciples, shall, future tense, he do. Who is the he? Beginning with his disciples, he that believeth on me. See, it's through faith in Christ. Believing is dealing with faith. On me, meaning Christ. So all these works that the disciples did, it was according to the measure and gift of Christ. The gifts to do what Christ is saying here is according to the measure and the gift that Christ gives based on faith in him. And greater works than these shall he do. So how are the disciples of Christ going to be able to do the works that Christ did and greater works than what Christ did. 
How would that be possible? Would, would they be able to do those works of Christ separate or aside from him? Let's find out. Because, so because meaning the cause of you being able to do the works that I do and greater works than what I do because you believe on me, the cause is because I, Jesus Christ, go unto my what? Father. So through Christ ascending to the Father to sit on the right hand of God after his resurrection from the dead to function as our high priest, the disciples of Christ would be able to do the works that he did and greater works. Why? Once again, because I go unto my father. So the works that Peter and the apostles did, that Christ did, and greater works than what Christ did were not done separate or side of Jesus Christ. They were done through Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of the father. Because I go unto my, because all this that he said is because I go unto my father. So when did Christ ascend to the father? When he went after his resurrection from the dead, he was with his disciples for 40 days. And then he ascended on high, to sit on the right hand of God to begin the fulfilling of the prophecy in the book of Psalm 110 verse 1. When David said the most high, Let, let's get that scripture, Psalm 110 and 1. Let's go to Psalm 110 and 1. Because I go unto my father. David spoke about Christ going unto the father. David, king of Israel. Before the kingdom of Judah, before the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah went into captivity. Thousands and thousands, thousand years before Christ was born. The Lord said. Unto my Lord, meaning the Most High said unto David's Lord. The Lord, meaning the Most High. Said. Unto. Meaning the Most High said this unto my Lord. Who is David's Lord? Our Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of David, is our Lord. The descendant of David, whom the Most High said would come from David's lineage, is the Lord of Israel. And his Lord, the Most High, said unto David's Lord, Jesus Christ. So we can understand, let's explain it in words super easy to be understood. The Lord, meaning the Most High, said unto my Lord, the my there is David, and the Lord there, right before the comma, is Christ. So that's the Most High right there, capital L, bold, you see how it's capital L, O-R-D, all in capitals, Without even going into Hebrew. Right here in the English. It's telling us that this first Lord here is the most high. 
Then there's a second Lord. There's a capital L, the lowercase O-R-D. Because what's the order? According to our, our beloved brother in Christ, whom many in Israel hate and despise because they hate the Most High and Christ. What did Paul teach according to 1 Corinthians 11? That the head of every man is Christ. That's why David called him his Lord. And the head of Christ is who? God, the Most High. So the Lord, meaning the Most High, said unto my Lord, that my there is David, because it's a psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, and, and, and when you read in Matthew 22, Christ said that, Yahweh, Jesus Christ said that David said this in the spirit. <laughs> he was in the spirit. Then you got Israel talking about don't, don't say Lord. If you say Lord, that's Baal. Uh, David called the Most High his, the, the, the Lord of Lords, and he called Jesus Christ, his descendant, the Messiah, Israel, the anointed one, his Lord. See, although they, see the thing with David, David was so much in the spirit when he said this. He, he, that's why it's truth, like Christ said. When, when Christ said, David in the spirit said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou my right hand till I make thy foes thy footstool. David knew that the descendant that would come from his seed or his lineage or his loins is spiritually his Lord. Remember, Paul said in Hebrews 7, 14, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of what? Judah. So, he's, so Paul is saying, look, according to the scriptures, it's written that our Lord, the Lord of Israel, Israel's Lord was to come out of Judah. Why? Because the Most High made a covenant with David, which came from the tribe of Judah. That of the fruit of his loins, he would raise up one of his sons, one of his descendants to sit upon his throne. And now the Most High would establish his kingdom forever. That, that's why they called in the, in the Gospels, they called Jesus Christ. They called him the son of David, but they also called him his Lord. That's where these Israelites that call themselves non-Messianics, that's following the so-called white man's Judaism, be stumbling at. They don't acknowledge and understand that this is David speaking in the Spirit, through the outpouring of the Spirit of the Most High, when he said, the Lord, meaning the Most High, Said that to my Lord, meaning the Jesus, uh, um, David's Lord, Jesus Christ, sit thou at my right hand. So who is to sit at the right hand of the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh? Some say in the English, Jehovah. And by the way, going back to the point, calling the Most High or Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not a sin. It's not calling him Baal. It's acknowledging the Most High is our power. And he is the Lord. He is the Most High. And his son, his chosen one, his beloved son is our Lord. That's the order. Christ said, no man could come to the Father but by me. That's why Jesus Christ is our Lord. The Most High, he's the Lord. He's the Lord right there. He is the Lord. But Christ said, no man could come to the Father, the Lord, but by what? Me. Sit down at my right hand. So when did Christ sit on the right hand of the Father? He already is. Stephen saw him standing on the right hand of God. Christ sat on the right hand of God after his resurrection from the dead at Jerusalem. When he ascended to the Father to enter into his glory, that's when, we, that's when he sat on the right hand of God. That's how he entered into his glory. Sit down my right hand. 
So the Christ we preach continues to sit on the right hand of the Father. So when you sit on the right hand of the Father, what does that mean? All power and authority was subject to Christ. When you sit on the right hand of the Most High, what does that mean? You're the Most High's right hand man, meaning you're doing the Father's will and his purpose. That's why when he rose from the dead after his resurrection from the dead, what did he say? All power and authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why? Because he's sitting on the right hand of God in heaven, in the spiritual realm, as we speak. And all power and authorities are subject to him in heaven and in earth. The Lord Christ, he's running things. Until I, meaning the most high, the Lord, make, see, till I make thine enemies, the enemies of Christ, thy what? Footstool. So the enemies of Jesus Christ are going to be made his what? Footstool at his second coming. The final enemy that's going to be destroyed is death, as Paul explained in 1 Corinthians 15. This is like a twofold prophecy. This is spiritual. The final enemy that's going to be destroyed because in the resurrection from the dead, death is not going to have power over man that believed in Christ. The final enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. Because the dead are going to be raised unto incorruptible. The final enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. So remember, we were reading in John 14, the works that I do shall he do also, because I go unto my what? My father. So when Peter and John said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, and that man leaped up and walked, and praise God in the temple. That was done. By the power and authority. That was given unto Jesus Christ. David's Lord. That's how this was done. Psalm 110 and 1. When Jesus Christ said. when I mean when Peter said. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. When Peter said those words. Jesus Christ was sitting on the right hand of the Father, just like David in the Psalms prophesied while he was king of Israel. Because by Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, all power and authority subject to him. He had the power to heal this man that was crippled. Let's go back to John 14 real quick. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That's what Psalm 110 and 1 was talking about. Because I, David's Lord, go unto my Father. The Lord said unto my Lord, David's Lord, sit thou on my right hand. So Christ sitting on the right hand of God. You have Peter and John praying over this brother. The ministry of Christ continues. After his resurrection from the dead, through his ascension into heaven, the gospel continues. That's what the book of Acts is about. The Acts of the Apostles were not done by, the, by, by their own holiness or power. It was done by the power and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. See? So when they prayed over their brother, that was done in the name of Jesus Christ. That will what I do. So that's why Peter said, it's not by our own holiness or power that we made this man whole. Because they understood what Christ said to them before he was crucified and killed. See, they, these men, Peter and John were in the spirit. They didn't let any type of leaven get in their mind to make themselves to be high minded. Imagine these prideful Israelites today that call themselves bishops and deacons and six-year-old general. All these Israelites that gave themselves these fake ranks. Imagine the Lord gave them the power to do these things. What would they do with this power? They would corrupt themselves. Because they're covetous men. That's why they, they promote their camps and their congregations as vessels of truth. Christ is the vessel of truth. Christ is the truth. See, Peter and John, were, they, they were men that feared the Most High. They were faithful and obedient to Christ. 
They didn't promote and exalt themselves like these so-called bishops and deacons and elders and these different IUICs and the ISUPKs and uh, all these different ABC camp names. These man-made camps with these fake ranks that they gave themselves and gave others to promote and exalt themselves so that Israel be all in idolatrous man worship, being disguised as praising the Most High in Christ. It's falsehood. The men of God knew who would be doing the, the true works. And whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, meaning by my power and authority, that will I do. The Lord raised that man from that state of being crippled for 40 years of his life. Why? That the Father may be glorified in who? The Son. That's why the man, it told us in Acts 3, that he praised God. If ye shall ask anything in my name, meaning by my power and authority, I will do it. Not Peter and John. Not any man on earth by their own power or holiness. It's Christ sitting on the right hand of God. So we'll end it here. Let's go to Matthew 22. So repent, Israel. We party these different camps. Flee from sinners from the face of a serpent. Do not get caught up in idolatrous man worship. Because that's what you got in these camps. In these fake ranks that they're giving our, our brothers. To control and manipulate them. Christ said you shall know them by their fruits. Their fruits speak for themselves. The idolatrous man worships. It's, 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 it's the works of the flesh. They're manifest. But are we spiritually discerning them? Or we get caught up in the witchcraft, under the spell of the witchcraft of these so-called bishops, elders, deacons, officers, captains, generals, six-shield generals, and all these other fake ranks that they gave themselves. Let's go to Matthew 20 and 30. Matthew chapter 20, verse 30. So we're going to end it here saying, behold, two blind men, blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, so they were hearing, they knew about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So now they're hearing the Lord is walking by. He's coming by. So these two blind men heard this. When they heard that Jesus Christ passed by, cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou what? Son of David. These two blind men are spiritual enough to know that the son of David is Israel's Lord. But these Israelites that claim themselves, oh, we about the Torah and the Tanakh, the Torah and the Tanakh. See, I follow Torah. I follow the Tanakh. You don't follow the Torah and Tanakh. You follow in traditions of men. Because if we were about the Torah and Tanakh, like Christ said in John 5, if you were really about Moses' writings, you would believe in, in that you would believe in what Moses and the prophet spoke of the, the, the Christ of Nazareth that we were born in Jerusalem. Do we understand what these men are saying? They're calling Jesus Christ their Lord, thou son of David. So that's showing you that Israel knew that the son of David is their Lord. So how can a descendant of David be Israel's Lord? Because the son of David that was born in Bethlehem of Judah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his days are from old and from everlasting. He was with God before the world was. But it behooved them to be made like one of us. Christ had to, the Messiah, the son of David, had to come in the flesh. He didn't come through no immaculate conception. Half man, half, this is Greek 
idolatry that Israel is coming with when they're coming with the immaculate conception. And they don't call the immaculate conception. It's the virgin birth. It's the same devil doctrine. Christ came from the seed of David. He came through Joseph and Mary. Not through Mary and then uh, uh, some other way. But that's another topic. Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. So the, and another thing that needed to be brought up, they knew that the Lord of Israel, whom the Most High, the Lord, sent to Israel, they knew that the Lord of Israel, the son of David, would be the one that would come to bring what upon them? Mercy. Mercy. They're blind. They need mercy. Who are they calling on? The son of David. And what do they call the son of David? Jesus Christ, their Lord. That's why we ain't trying to hear these, these Israelites with their fake Hebrew talking about don't, you call the name, you call Jesus in, in the most high Lord, that's, uh, that's um, what do they call it? They call it a certain term. They're saying, they're saying that that's calling them Baal. They weren't calling Jesus Christ Baal. What kind of doctrine is this? A, a doctrine with a lot of flaws and holes in it. Because it's of men. And the multitude rebuked them. So you had a multitude of Israel rebuking them. Because they should hold their peace. So in their eyes, they like, man, y'all be quiet. Hold your peace. But they cried the more. See, that's the spirit, man. You telling me to be quiet? Please, I'm going to cry some more. Lord, <laughs> have mercy on us. O Lord, thou what? Son of David. Once again, they're calling Jesus Christ their Lord. They're calling the son of David, David's descendant, their Lord. And they in the spirit, just like David spoke it in Psalm 110 and 1. That these Israelites that reject Jesus Christ as Israel's Lord, the descendant of David, whom the Most High promised to Israel, they are out the spirit. But y'all talking about the Ruach Kodash. You got to have the Ruach, brother. You got to know the Torah and the Tanakh, the, the Torah. The law and the prophets. David in the Psalms spoke about Christ and these brothers in the spirit. They told him, they told these men, shut down. <laughs> but they cried the more saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. So the son of David is Jesus Christ. And they called Jesus Christ their Lord. And what were they praying for? Mercy. Forgiveness. Healing. Redemption. Now, let's see if Christ rebuked them. Don't call me Lord. That's Baal. Don't call me the son of David. Don't call me Lord. Let's see what the Lord said. And Jesus, meaning the son of David, David's descendant, Israel's Lord, David's Lord, and Jesus stood what? Still. So he stopped because the men were crying unto him, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, what will ye that I Meaning, I, as the son of David, your Lord, your Lord, that comes with mercy, what will ye that I shall do unto you? What is it that you would want that I do unto you? So they didn't rebuke them and say, don't call me Lord. That's Baal. No, that's what these false teachers in Israel, with their fake Hebrew and false semblance of the Torah and the Tanakh. Always talking about the Torah. See, I follow Torah. They're not following the Torah. They're following the so-called Jews. Leaven. And that has to be repented of. Because when you read in Luke 24, Christ taught his disciples out of the law of Moses, out of the books of the prophets, the Torah and the Tanakh, the Psalms of David. How he came to fulfill the prophecies that they spake of the Messiah of Israel. 
But let's read it again, verse 32. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? And they said unto him, Lord. So how many times they called Jesus Christ their Lord? Three times. Lord, that our eyes may be open. So they prayed. They asked the Lord to open their eyes to see. So Jesus had what? Compassion on them, see? He didn't call them two-thirds. You're wicked. You're in that state because you're wicked as hell. You don't keep the law, statutes, commandments. That's why you're cursed. That's what you hear in a lot of these so-called street teachings. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately, just like in Acts 3, because Christ said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father. And immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. These two men became disciples of Jesus Christ, and all praises goes to who? The Most High, and the name of Jesus Christ in Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Father. So all praises. So that's the end of the lesson. All right, Israel, most high in Christ, bless us all. Happy Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread. I hope the lesson was edifying, and Lord will, we try to get some more scriptures on this topic next time. But our most high in Christ, bless us all. Peace and blessings to you all. So hopefully everyone had a, a blessed Passover last night, beginning in the places that y'all got together. And um, hopefully we all have a blessed rest of the feast day. All right. So uh, peace and blessings to Ruth Evans. Most high in Christ bless you, sister. Brother Paris Hanchett. Sh shalom to you, brother, as well. Christopher Copeland. Peace and blessings to you and your home as well, brother. Felipe. Most high in Christ bless you, brother. Sister Hadassah. Most high in Christ bless you too, sister. Ziva. Most high in Christ bless you, sister. Peace and blessings from our home to your home. So that's all we have for today, Israel. That's where it's at right there, Israel. Right there. Veronica, most high in Christ, bless you, sister. Mary, most high in Christ, bless you, sister. You and Joseph. Azariah, most high in Christ, bless you, brother. Ilam, most high in Christ, bless you and your household, brother. Happy Passover, love y'all. Stay strong. Blessings to the, the Boston Church. Azariah, blessings to the Houston Church. Ibadja, blessings to your home, the Houston Church and Fellowship. 
Felipe, I saw that picture with you, your Howard Don, Benjamin, and um Jesse. It was like a like a old picture from from the like a Western man. That was tight. Blessings to you uh, as uh, uh, Earl and your sister, your, uh, your wife Chik Chiquita. So that's all we have for today. Most High Christ bless y'all. Be safe. Most High Christ be with us all. Let's keep enduring. Pray for one another. Pray for all Israel. Miss you too, Brother Earl. Lord willing, we'll fellowship again soon. But, you know, we, we with each other in spirit. Tell Chiquita we say shalom. 